knowing for a long time that the rates of home ownership are falling and the rates of private rental are rising. Yeah. And so are the majority of people you represent really wishing they could afford their own home or are many of them actually happy to be renting rather than get, getting into the um, yeah. ownership side of things? Look, I think what people want is stable homes, the homes that they can rely on, that they can choose to raise a family in or that they can live in their, in their retirement. What they don't actually, what they're not so concerned about is whether they own it or not. Uh, and so the private rental sector doesn't give you any of that security, any of that stability. You don't know where your rents are going to be in six months' time. You don't know where you're going to be living in six mm. months' time. Uh, and so people look to home ownership to give them that stability. And so are we looking mainly at state regulated issues here in terms of what tenants uh, want things to change and how they want things to improve? Or are you looking to the uh, federal government for things that they might introduce in next month's budget to help people who are tenants? Yeah, look, I think state-based issues uh, include the residential tenancy laws, so the actual contract terms between landlords and tenants. But a lot of our issues in housing are federal issues, that tax settings, that um, the, the way we encourage people to buy property and we subsidise that uh, as a as a alternative to actually providing them with stable homes. So Scott Morrison's looking at some good things like bond aggregators that will increase hopefully the supply of social housing. Sorry, what are bond aggregators? So a bond aggregator is uh, where uh, community housing providers mostly will be able to borrow money at low rates uh, in order to boost the supply of social housing, which will really help uh, the people at the lower end of the market who frankly weren't be going to be able to buy their own home anyway, uh, even before the, um, you know, the this boom. news or this boom. Yeah. yeah. And so let's go to the contract situation then uh, between tenants and uh, owners. Uh, what, what would you like to see uh, mandated in those contracts to make things uh, a little fairer for mm. people who are tenants? Look, what we'd really like is for a tenant to be able to choose when their time in their home is over. Uh, and so really what we're looking for is an end to the no grounds evictions where a landlord can end a tenancy and say, I don't have a reason, I don't have to give you a reason. And in fact, even if they give a dodgy reason, they don't have to ever stand by the reasons that they've, they've given. So uh, there are good reasons or, or, or acceptable reasons to end a tenancy, a breach of the contract in a rent arrears mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, but when it's just that the landlord thinks that they can probably get a higher rent from the next tenant, then that's really disruptive to families, to pensioners who um, are actually doing it very tough. And what this report shows is that we're increasingly getting close to a real cliff where most people are going to be in the private renting market and our renting system is going to keep churning through and it's going to be really horrible. And so what length of tenancies would you like to see become available for people? We're in favour of a, a, a sort of indefinite tenancy if you if you like but we know people move from homes you know they they need a bigger house they need a, a second room or, or so on so we're not saying that people will be in their house forever what we're really getting at is that the landlord should have to give a reason uh, and stand by that reason so that the tenant can understand why they're having to move um, but that the default should start to shift towards tenants being able to decide when to end their own tenancy because it is their home for the period that they're paying the rent. And so what do you think are some examples of reasonable and unreasonable um, reasons for mm. an owner to kick a tenant out? Um, so look, some of the reasons might be that if a landlord uh, needs to want or has decided to redevelop the property, so it was a really old house, yep. it's time to you know knock it down and rebuild something, um, that would seem like a reasonable uh, explanation to give and something that you can back up by evidence with contracts and so on. Uh, if you're going to take a building out of the rental market um, completely, so maybe you're, you're going to move back in yourself as a homeowner, yeah. um, that would seem like a reasonable thing. And, and again, something that you can demonstrate and stand by. Um, where, it's, uh, where, where it becomes an issue is where someone says, well, I'm going to move in um, or I'm going to move my kids in or, or whatever. And then two months later, the property's back on the market again, usually right. at a higher rent. And there's and, nothing tenants can do. And you've found that happening? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and they have been able to get higher rents because <laughs> the market's a bit crazy. At least in Sydney, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what's happening on the, what you'd like to see happen on the contract front. Mm. What would you like to see happen from uh, Scott Morrison with the budget next month? Yeah. Look, really, uh, you know, there, there's no indication it's going to happen, but uh, capital gains uh, reform, um, Treating there, that the there, same there as income. Are, there are sounds that there might be a bit of movement on that. There are some signals, yeah. yeah. So, well, hopefully. Uh, and negative gearing reform. Uh, just trying to bring back a, a sense of uh, 
a neutrality between different kinds of investment uh, or, or different kinds of, of, of profit, so that an income versus a, a land uh, return should be treated very similarly, but also acknowledging and balancing uh, the needs of the residents of these houses uh, against the, the um, wishes of the owners. What about the government's argument that that would be taking a sledgehammer to the issue? That's mm. what it seems to be saying on negative gearing changes. Yeah. Look, I think there's many ways that you could implement negative gearing changes, and, and some of them might well be a sledgehammer, uh, and some of them could be done more softly with a phase in. You know, policy uh, setting is complicated. There's always going to be different approaches, but I think some positive action is what everyone is screaming for.